Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, where it's all about fixing your marriage without your man's conscious efforts that you feel desired and taken care of and special, even if your relationship feels completely hopeless. I'm Laura Doyle, and today I'm talking about how to rebuild your marriage during a separation. My guest, Carrie L., was devastated when her husband was flirting with a female friend while she was pregnant, and then again when they separated. Years went by, and she never gave up hope of reconciling, and then she discovered a new way to interact with her husband, and he returned and gave her back the wedding ring she had thrown at him. And today, she says her marriage is smooth and intimate. She's going to tell us how she did it so you can do it, too. The Worst Advice of the Week Award goes to an article about the 15 things your partner will never do if you're in a healthy relationship. And I'm thinking your partner would have to be a golden retriever to measure up to this definition of a healthy relationship. All of that's coming up. But first, I'm going to share how to rebuild your marriage during a separation. If you've been through a separation or if you're separated now, you already know it's one of the most painful things you can go through. It's incredibly hurtful to reach the point where you can no longer be with the person you thought was your forever person. And it's especially heart-wrenching when part of you still wants to be together. Or maybe you know with all your heart that you want to save your marriage, but he's made it clear he's done. It sure is easy to feel hopeless when that happens. But is your situation hopeless? Can you see any signs that you'll reconcile after all? What are those signs, you ask? Well, here are three big ones. Number one, you're listening to this podcast. Number two, you want to reconcile. And number three, you're willing to try something new. And if that's the boat you're in, then there's hope for saving your marriage, even if you're separated. If you're looking for a marriage reconciliation plan that works. Here's how to rebuild your marriage after a separation. Number one, envision life after reconciliation. Rena wasn't even sure she wanted to save her marriage. Her husband had left her and their two children, and then she found out he was having an affair and that he'd slept with prostitutes over the course of their marriage. On top of all that, he had the nerve to blame her for their problems all these years. It seemed pretty clear that divorce was the way to go, especially after he bought his own house and he was now in another country with his mistress. But Rita still had this little voice deep down saying she wanted to save this marriage and reconcile her family. If she could have looked into a crystal ball to see her future, she would have seen that her husband came back home, that he was serving her a cappuccino, while she sat back and relaxed on a video call. It's true. One day he came home and he said, I miss you and I love you. And she kept bracing herself for the but. Instead, she heard the words, and I'm sorry. If, like Rena, you're unsure whether you even want to try sitting on that fence, well, it's a very uncomfortable place to be. But what if you knew with unshakable certainty that you too could save your marriage. Why not have a chat with your future self? Let her tell you about the handholding and the deep talks and the laughs you're sharing and the romantic getaways that are ahead for you. How would you show up differently today if you knew that was the eventual outcome? How would you show up differently? Well, Rena decided to show up differently in two key ways. First, after getting in touch with her desire to stay married, she said so. She simply told her husband, I would love to stay married. And she was able to let go of any expectation or attachment, knowing that she would be okay no matter what. She relinquished control of his actions and his timeline and focused on herself. Secondly, to stay firmly off the fence, she quit listening to the naysayers. She stopped confiding in anyone who wasn't 100% supportive of her vision for her marriage. All those well-meaning friends and family saying, you deserve better because they want the best for you. That can just be another obstacle to reconciliation. 
you always get to choose either your faith or your fear. And when your marriage is in crisis, it's easy enough to choose fear on your own. Others piling on makes it harder to choose faith. So Rena leaned on her relationship coach instead, and she got served. I'm talking about cappuccino, not the divorce papers. And she has a happy family to show for her courage in focusing on the outcome she wanted instead of focusing on the outcome she feared. Next, start your project. Maria's marriage seemed just fine. So she was shocked when her husband abruptly told her he wanted a break and he moved out and she found out he was seeing his secretary. When you're as devastated as Maria was, it seems impossible not to fixate on him. The questions swirling through your mind tend to sound like, you know, why did he leave? What is he thinking? What is he feeling? What is he doing right now? Where is he and who is he with? What are his intentions for the future? Is he done? Maria had coaching support, so she saw that questions like those were coming from fear and landed like control, which pushes people away. She recognized that badgering him with questions like that would just further chip away at the very trust she wanted to restore. And she knew it was vital to show respect for his thinking and give him the space to work through what he needed to work through. Her antidote was to keep the focus on herself. But how? Rena had called it Project Build Your Own Life, which for her meant going out for tea time or champagne with friends or relaxing in her garden and thinking about what she wanted to do with her career. Maria's Project Build Your Own Life meant taking good care of herself. Sure, she wished her husband would take care of her, maybe buy her flowers, so she bought them for herself, surrounding herself with sunflowers. She also spent time thinking about her own future and considered going overseas to continue her studies. Her husband, who had started coming over more and more, talked her out of leaving the country. And then one day, he came home for good. The front desk girl, she was gone. He started kissing Maria on the lips, something he had quit doing, and holding hands in public, which she said never happened. He also began saying, I love you multiple times a day, which he had never done in all their years of marriage. He held her so tight at night, she had to sleep crooked. If these women can rebuild their marriages during a separation, that means it's possible for you too. And it's not just possible, but likely when you have the right information and support to become your best self. To paraphrase Thomas Wolfe, miracles not only happen around here, they happen all the time. If you'd like to be my guest on the Empowered Wife podcast and share about how you fixed a struggling relationship using the six intimacy skills, I would love to interview you. Just go to lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest to let me know that you are willing to make a big contribution to ending world divorce by telling your relationship story. I look forward to meeting you. That's lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest. My guest, Cario, was devastated when her husband was flirting with a female friend while she was pregnant. And then again, when they separated, years went by and she never gave up hope of reconciling. And then she discovered a new way to interact with her husband and he returned and he gave her back the wedding ring she had thrown at him. And today she says her marriage is smooth and intimate. She's going to tell us how she did it so you can do it too. Carrie L., welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast. Thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm really excited about this. I can't believe it actually. <laughs> right, right. It's a big deal. Yes. Well, we. I can't wait to hear the whole story. So Tell us what things were like uh, in the bad old days in your marriage. All right, here we go. <laughs> um, before, you know, like um, what happened, I was pregnant that time and I felt a bit uneasy, you know, with um, seeing my husband texting a lot of times, not talking to me. And um, even his uh, workmates telling me about this, their concern that he's becoming too 
close to one of um you know his uh workmates so yeah that's uh how it started um i was a bit okay the first time but then when it becomes like all the time he's going out and he's uh like time for me becoming less and um yeah that's uh started the fight i started asking him where are you going again why you're uh, leaving us again i'm alone here and i felt alone because um that time i can't go out alone can't uh, go to pub or do other things and then yeah we started uh, like fighting a lot uh getting angry at each other, even the little things. So that's how it began. Then he, you know, when he, I think he got fed up uh, with um, my complaints. So he started to ignore me. And then even me, I started not to talk. So I think both of us reacted badly. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we're putting walls on each other and then we draw ourselves to other people that's when you know we lose the intimacy oh, it sounds very painful especially while you're pregnant you feel so vulnerable and like yes. you said you were able to do other things mm, yeah that's right but then um like things change you know we become much worse <laughs> after that and um you know when the baby came so of course sleepless nights and we still uh, get uh, you know that problem and then he started to go further away from me and when um our baby turns like nearly three years old i i can't do it anymore i can't like this is too much for me to handle so um i resorted to you know also going out with friends they started to you know do things uh, differently and like rebelling with him why he, he can go out and i can't because he's you no know, something like that so that's what i did which really like rock the ship more <laughs> intensely and then um yeah when he knew that i was talking to other men also and you know other friends then he started to like i said it's you know we have to separate ways that's when we separated well i just want to touch on that for a second because um especially i think when you're the mom of a young child too like you also you still have that need to feel desired and special and have someone pay attention Right. Yeah. And so it's an enormous temptation, especially if you feel like he's getting attention somewhere else. It just feels like, like breathing, like you just need to breathe a little bit and get, yeah. yeah. And so, and so that's where you were. And, um, but I, I appreciate hearing, um, because you're not the only one, right? This is, this goes on a lot of, in a lot of marriages where things are, have broken down so much that it feels like outside people are going to give you what you need uh, more than your spouse can at that time. Yeah. And so, but it, it sounds like that was the, the thing that made him say, okay, we, we need to separate. Yes. Yeah. That's um, because we cross boundaries. Yeah. Both yeah. of us like, um, yeah, it's not working, you know, anymore. Like we don't uh, really talk properly. We're not, uh, on resolving the matter we're just going on different ways so I think that's when he decided like okay I'll just go you know he didn't tell me but he just he just leave <laughs> he oh just leave gosh. and then yeah so that's what happened and it, it was hard but I, I know it was also a part of it also was my fault because I also like I said you know I um rebel <laughs> also on him yeah. yeah and i didn't respect him that's when i realized like you know because um one part of it was like you know i was texting another um man and then i really wanted him for uh, for him to see that so i left the the phone <laughs> i wanted him to be angry you know it's yes. uh, like how you um what you did to me I, you know i can do to you as well i, I wanted that i felt like revengeful 
in those times. Maybe it's, uh, I don't know, maybe it's my emotion or um, because I've been going through a lot or whatsoever. But I, and that's what I felt at those moments. And then when he saw that message, he said, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. And I, I don't know why I'm still hoping or what reaction, was, but I know it's wrong, but I've done it. You know, so, so that yeah. was a mistake. I know, but it happened. You're a mere, mere mortal woman, right? You're a mere mortal woman. And yeah. it sounds like there was so much pain that you wanted to, you wanted to make the situation shift in some way. And this was yeah. the way to get it a different situation. So then, so then he was angry and, and then he left without telling you, he said. You yeah, came when he was gone, or no, um, he keep on leaving us, like you know, most of the time, on those uh, times, and then he just uh, told me, um, just tell the landlord that um, we're not staying here anymore. So yeah, so um, I left with uh, no choice and I can't handle the finances alone with one child. So I said. Um, you know, okay, I don't want to stay here as well, so I'll better look for a place for us. But I haven't found a place actually that time, but I was also like a bit, you know, aggressive and, you know, I I, I wanted to stand up on my own and prove him that I can do it. You know, all those things in my mind, pride, call it, <laughs> call it like that. And, um, yeah, but I don't know. In at the back of my head, I don't know what to do, but I have to do it. And then I told the landlord, I don't have any backup thing, you know, where to go that time, because it was just sudden. But the landlord gave us like uh, like a month to, you know, when we told it, I told him a month. Then I can find a place for us. But luckily. Um, one of my like senior nurse, I work in a nursing home, and um, I told my senior nurse, she was uh, one of my close friends, that I need a place for me and my daughter. And then she accommodated us for a month. So, yeah, I live with a friend. She's South African from, yeah. And um, it's only one bedroom. We stayed in her bed. She was really kind to us. And she's the one on the floor with my child. Yes, that's what happened. And um, one more thing. The day that uh, we, um, you know, the day that we separated, we removed everything from the house. Um, they had a car accident. <laughs> yeah, it's horrible. Everything went just... <laughs> Yeah. You know, they had a car accident and my daughter was there. So he was like vomiting a lot and I was at work. I don't know what to do. So I have to rush to the hospital and I just can't think of anything right at that moment. I was like crying why everything is not going right with my relationship, with at work. And even at work also, I was at chaos because I can't function anymore. So you know, my manager sees me horribly. And then I also, um, that time, um, I said I cannot uh, go to work anymore. And because I'm having problem also with work, um, they um, see things that I'm not focused, you know, of course, but I cannot share. Okay. I'm, I don't feel like you know, they will trust me or they, I will trust them with, you know, they can't help. So I don't have anybody that time. I don't have family here in the UK. Only his family is here. Oh. So I'm alone. I'm really alone. My family are um, all in the Philippines. So when my daughter was, I went to hospital, go back to that when the car crash on the day that we separated. Um, yeah, I went to hospital and then um, we waited for like overnight until my uh, daughter settled. And then I went to my friend. She um, helped us to stay there. So it was really like, you can't imagine what happened the day. Yeah. It sounds awful. A lot of drama. And it was the day you separated. 
and you were separated. You, you remained separated for a long time. Yeah, four years. Four years. So four your daughter, years. your daughter's like seven now. Is that right? She's turning eight. Uh, no, she's eight now, actually. She's eight now, yeah. yeah. She's okay. eight. Now, okay, yeah. yeah. So, okay, so what happened? <laughs> Yeah, I can't believe. And um, what um, happened was like, you know, I'm praying because I don't have a peace of mind. <laughs> That's yeah. the only like, you know, I think that I have that I can rely on to is my uh, my faith. You know, I'm Christian and I'm praying God give me guidance, you know, what to do. I don't know. I felt like I'm going crazy that time. So I uh, went to like, because I work in the hospital, so I ask for like guidance, you know, something um like that. And um, you know, they they said they can only give advice on what to do, where to go, you know, all those things. But deep inside, you know, you want to scream, like you want to be angry, all those emotions. So yeah, and um they helped, they uh guided me, but still I need something more. So like I said, I keep on praying. And then I stumble with your book. And then I saw your book. I said, what is this? You know, Surrendered Why? You know, it sounds intriguing. Yeah. And because I wanted um, to have peace. That's the main, my main goal, you know. When yeah. I see him, because I can't, like, stop him from coming to us. <laughs> yeah. Even though I wanted to. He wanted to see, you know, his daughter. So... Um, I stumbled upon your book in the um, um, website and yeah, I was like interested with just a glimpse of what the other women were saying. They said, sounds like me, you know, <laughs> and then I ended up buying the book. Oh, <laughs> I there it is. Up, <laughs> yes, I ended up buying the book and I read through everything. I think it's only like two nights. I finished it all. Yeah, because it was really like me, you know. It speaks for what I'm going through. Wow. And then um, I still keep on, uh, you know, like, what else can I do? Because I started some. And then um, I felt like I'm not um, doing it. It doesn't uh, do any good to me you know something like that but I still continue continue and then I listen to your podcast and then I started also following the you know the lady uh, the ladies group you have before yeah I forget who were there before so yeah I shared also my struggles my winning moments you said the small victories we call it so yeah it lifts up my spirit it helps me to like, you know, to felt like I'm in a safe place to talk about this. Because when I talk to my parents, they will always just say, don't go back, you know, oh. just, yeah, I don't feel anything like, you know, support that I still wanted to keep my family. It doesn't sound good to them. <laughs> because I've been telling them what happened and of course it's horrible <laughs> you know yeah. to them it doesn't sound like I'm in a safe place so they don't want anymore so I don't get the right response and yeah um, you know my decision is like I wanted half of me wanted to you know complete my family half of me wanted to get out of the situation so yeah I continue with the book and then, yeah, I started to feel like at peace, you know, with myself. Because it's like I have a lot of time from, you know, from working nonstop. And then because I became a single parent, you know, from that uh, time, I don't know what to do with my time. I started, it started, you know, um, like coming into my mind everything what happened. And I'm just crying screaming in my pillow every night it's like I don't have peace at all and I want to change that but I don't know how yeah. so that this book is like a save you know <laughs> saving um you know grace to me I think it's an answered book to me by God oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah yeah it well, is really Laura wonderful to hear that you got so much peace how how did you get that? Like, what did you start to do differently than you had been doing things? Yeah. 
So, um, because he wanted to still see my um, daughter, and I can't stop that. I still wanted to be like, you know, when I see him, I don't want to shout. <laughs> All those things, you know, I, I wanted to still able to talk to him and greet him. And um, so um, I started to talk to him like, like normally because when you fight it's like you don't want to you know to start conversation anymore you don't know how to begin even to talk the simple things so with uh, the book it helped me how not to shout <laughs> how not to you know just to give the information that, that I needed to and um yeah and then I started to um, do self-care just before I never does. I like I don't have time. So what I did when I was alone, I started to exercise. <laughs> exercise alone, then I really lose weight a lot. I was oh. 60 and then I became like 54, but in good, you know, in good shape, not like, you know, <laughs> really uh, bad, looks bad. So I, I started to take care again um myself. Then I go out with my friends. A lot, you know, we go out in the park with the children and I really enjoyed that time. And um, I shared, you know, my struggle also. Then I met a friend in uh, Marks and Spencer <laughs> and then, uh, you know, we get along well. She also got um, children. Then we go out with her children. So I make new friends, actually. Yeah. With what we lost. Yeah, I gained something from it. Yeah. So that's what I change. I think I change a lot uh, from that um, time. Yeah. And this all contributed to you feeling more calm and peaceful. Yes. Yeah, I feel more calm. I feel like I'm not worried anymore about, you know, the day uh, goes by or the time goes by. Because before it's like, I'm just listening to the clock. Yeah. Just waiting for my daughter to come back and I won't be alone. You know, that's what I feel. I feel so alone. Yeah. And then, yeah, um, they, uh, some uh, friends told me, go out, go out. But I don't have the drive to go out. Not even to talk to people. I think I fall into depression um, that time. And it's a struggle to come out of the house. I don't really care about myself, like even to comb my hair, you know, before. I just want to take my daughter to school, come back, so she will not see me crying or she will not see me, you know, being horrible. But when I'm here, I just don't want to do anything. But when I started to read the book, little by little, I tried to step, you know, step forward. Uh, don't think about it. Read more like um, help, uh, helpful books, you know. And um, meditate. So I, I did those things, and it started to make me feel happy a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And so you were still interacting with your husband because you would um, he would drop off your daughter or pick her up. Yeah. 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 So how did he respond when you started doing the self care and not shouting at him? I think he was surprised. <laughs> I think you were surprised like this, you know, when he visits, why I'm not like crying, <laughs> why I'm not, because usually, I don't know, I cannot contain my emotion. It's, it's too much things going on when I see him. So just by seeing him, it's a lot of like background history in my, in my yeah. um, head. So yeah. I tried to contain that, you know, just to focus on the moment when he comes and not to, you know, um, talk again about what happened so I tried to stop that and then he started to respond by first I think he started to look at me in my eyes because he never he always like it's either look down or on the side when he talked oh. yeah so that's the first thing then he started to smile Oh. Because he never smiled. I know that's for a long time. It's like he never even like a little bit. You know, you can see when people yeah. are really like, um, you know, um, close to you or there's something different, you know, with them. Yeah. 
Yeah, so he started to smile. So why he's smiling? You know, even those little things, it becomes big. Oh, yes. Yeah. It yeah. is big. Yeah. It is. So, and then he started to buying grocery for really? us. Yeah, really? food. Because when he left, he never, never, never give money, never give anything to me. Yeah. Even though I ask, like, you still need to give, you know, support, blah, blah, blah. When I ask that, you need to, you need to, you know, all those things. It's not worth it. You know, he's not responding to that. So I stopped asking him. Then he started to buy, you know, this grocery. And I was like, Did I, you know, I was like, wow, <laughs> I'm amazed when he bought those groceries. And then I started seeing him like by surprise in uh, my daughter's school. He's coming to fetch uh, fetch her. So I'm there and he didn't even tell me so that he's coming. But anyway, a part of me was happy. But then my daughter is running towards him, not to me. So I felt like this is awkward a little yeah. bit. But I'm, I'm, you know, half, I'm a bit happy and not. <laughs> so that was the first uh, time when these changes is happening, was happening. Yeah. You could really see a big difference in the way he responded to you. The yeah. eye contact, the smiling, the groceries. And now he's showing up at your daughter's school to pick her up. So were you hoping to fix your marriage at this point? Or had you already given up on it? No. That time, it you know, clicks into my mind. Maybe he wanted, you know, to fix us. Why would he, you know? Yeah. And then I started to see signs like he wanted to, you know, to talk. He started messaging me. And then the biggest one was he asked me to do camping with them. <sighs> yeah. And I was <sighs> like, what? Do you know? It's so awkward. I don't know what to... I don't know if I say yes. Well, we are in that same, you know, little tent. And that would be, <laughs> I asked my friend, well, what shall I do? He said, give it a go or not. He said, oh, that's awkward, you know. Been a long time. We haven't um, been like, together. And then I said, I pray for it. And then, yeah, I felt like it's the right thing to do to, okay, say yes, give it a go. It's for my daughter anyway. You know, that was my first <laughs> Yeah. Like, excuse maybe yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah then that's um when i felt like oh, i started to you know um be attracted to him again it's like i like him the way when he's with my daughter because they are like i don't know there's something when they are together and they are happy and then it makes me feel happy also uh, like i felt accomplished somehow as yeah. a mom Yes, it's a to big build that accomplishment. Yes. Yeah, to build that bond again. So after that come, yeah, you know, in my mind, oh, he's coming. And then he started uh, also to come for, uh, come over to us. Like overnight, he said, can I stay here? He's, you know, then after that come, he started, can I stay here? And I don't know what to say, but because my daughter is saying, mom, you know, I wanted to be with that. And I was like, what can I do? You know, I don't know what else does. So I stayed inside my room, but I cannot sleep. You know, I cannot sleep. Like, Why is he here? You know, what is he doing? And I don't want, you know, all those things happen. It's so like, I felt uneasy, but you, know, you felt a little bit like, like oh, this is a nice feeling like again so exciting yeah. Yeah. he's coming he's, why he's here you know all those things like um he wanted to be romantically involved you know again at some how some point that time wow. to me so that's when he started little by little he's like that and then i realized in the big picture oh that's what he wanted to you know wow. so, yeah, and then I said, okay, um, fine. And then he said, go out. He told me, go out with your friends, then I'll take care of, you know, our daughter. Then I went out. You know, I have my girls' night out, and I'm, um, you know, I, I know that they are safe together, so I don't worry. 
And I started really feeling good. Yeah, this is really, you know, and my friends were saying, oh, he's coming again, like, you know, like a suit or he's, yes. you know, yes. yeah, doing all these great things for you. Yeah. So that's what happened. <laughs> You look so happy even as you're describing this. You're just smiling and your eyes are sparkling. So this must have felt wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Everything was like unbelievable after four years. And you think that, you know, there's no spark anymore. Like it will not come back. You know, those lost feeling, lost intimacy that you will never feel that again. You know, you will never feel love. No, it's like you don't. No, you can't. I, it's unbelievable, actually, what happened. Like a miracle. Yeah, mm, it is a miracle when he came back and um, with his brother, actually, because he said he wanted to come, you know, um, little by little um, with us. He stay overnight and then he said he wanted to stay with us, like properly. Then with his brother, in front of his brother, he gave me back the ring. Oh, and I was like, where did you get this? You know, <laughs> it's a long lost ring. Yeah, because <laughs> I've thrown I, the last uh, time I saw it was I've thrown it into his face. And I don't know. I thought he also like, you know, didn't keep it for a long time. <laughs> and then when I saw that, ring, oh, he kept it as a, and I kept his ring. Oh. <laughs> So, so when he showed me that, I showed him also his. Wow. Yeah. Him back his wedding ring too. Yeah. So again, it's, you know, <laughs> together. Wow. Yeah. And his brother is like, he's just, he just smiled when <gasps> we saw, he, when he saw us. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was like he, the brother, his brother was like a witness to. Um, yeah. Your, what happened? Mm. Well, and also to the re restoration, it was almost yeah. like uh, renewing your vows in a way. But yeah, I know it yeah. was a little more uh, spontaneous than that. Spontaneously, yeah, yeah. Mm. But um, but what a great day for you! Yes, indeed. It's like you said; it's a miracle that he really comes back without me telling him. <laughs> You know, yeah. do this, do that. Right. <laughs> you, know, you have to be here. You have to, you know, all those things. He did it by himself. I never asked him, you know, to, you know, um, buy us groceries, take me to camping or take me. You know, he started to be adventurous in his own way. Uh, he's the one planning, not me. I usually plan you know, those days out, those like, you know, when um, there's school, uh, uh, I mean, school break, I'm the one planning. But when he came back, he's the one doing everything like, you know, to plan for us, to help, to spend time. I think he's much aware now of um, my needs after that is he is and it sounds like he wants to be your hero yes yes <laughs> <Very true. much. laughs> do you ever feel tempted though to tell him what he needs to do no yeah yeah sometimes sometimes when he says oops here you go again you're nagging again you know something like that to me and then later on you know i i realized i started to say sorry and, you know, be humble with him, though it's difficult at the moment. What I realize, you don't need to talk now, now. You have, you can just, you know, give some time, give it some time. And then it's not the end of the day. <laughs> you can go back to it tomorrow when you're a bit relaxed. And then you say, and then I say sorry to him. So that, uh, you know, that time he will feel respected. Oh, beautiful. That is, that's so good. Congratulations on your, it sounds like your newly developed humility and patience yeah. to, and self-control to yes. wait until. And I think I heard it a little bit too earlier in the story when you, even when you stopped yelling at him to begin with, it sounds like you feel more dignified now. Yes. Yeah, our conversation changes now. I think my problem was before, I don't know how to um, talk to him properly. 
to relay the con you know the message properly it sounds like i'm speaking yeah i'm speaking the truth but not with love that's the mm -hmm. difference with that I speak the truth in love but i speak the truth just you know because i know that's right but it's not the matter of uh, you know right and wrong it's the way you know the way you speak to him to the way uh, i relay the message and the way he perceives it as well so what's an example of that like how do you so now you speak with love yeah yes i try to <laughs> yeah like um for example because um we talk about it like can you help me with the dishes you know all these things because i sometimes when i felt overwhelmed with uh, house things you know simple things but i felt overwhelmed i used to say oh you forget again this rubbish you know you i told you many times this I mean, all this it sounds I, I'm complaining again and again and again. But now I change the way I ask. Yeah. I said, can you please, you know, the magic word, like my daughter said, please. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Can you please help me with the dishes? Can you please help me to take the trash out? And then before he goes out to work, he really did. Yeah. <laughs> he really, goes, yeah. Yeah. Goes out to work. He really does it. Oh, he does it all. He okay, does yeah. It, yeah. He does yeah. those things. And when he's at home, you know, after he takes his bath, he will do the dishes. And yeah. weekends, he will do those things. Those simple requests. I realize I can make requests in a nice way. Yeah. I don't need to, to like, to shout, to complain, like, you know, or pile things up what he didn't do right. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like... You used to feel very resentful towards him. And now, where is that resentment? What happened to it? Where did it go? Gone. <laughs> Gone with what? the wind. How, 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 did you, how did you get rid of it? I don't know. Actually, I, it's gone totally. Yeah, I don't know. How did it change? When did it change? You know, it's really a miracle how... Uh, things change between us but um those resentment i i don't know actually i don't have an answer where it is now. i mean wherever it went you don't miss it it sounds <laughs> like so. yeah I, i'm not missing it anyway. No. <laughs> anyway and do you ever worry now that yeah oh, he's talking to another woman he's flirting no no no, you never no. because I think I trust him now more. I know how to trust him the you right way. You know how to trust him. The okay. right way. Yeah, okay. I thought I knew trust before, but no, I don't. I don't have an idea what is trust. You know, the real trust. So, um, yeah. And, you know, if whatever he does, it's, like I said, clean your side of your street. It's on you. It's on him. You know, I'm trying to be better with myself and i believe he's trying his best as well with how he's what he's doing actually we're buying our house oh my gosh yeah, congratulations it's a lot of things yeah so that exciting. has changed yeah after all those years and yeah he's really doing stepping up to be a leader now oh. in our in our house in wow. our home even praying he never prayed before he's praying with us now Oh, really? So I'm really proud of him. Yes, <laughs> yeah. He never prayed. He never, I never like saw him, you know, utter word of, you know, prayer. But now he's praying with us as a family every night. So I'm really, it's a big change that, you know, like I said, I want to uh, share to everyone. Yeah. You want to shout it from the rooftops, right? Because this is. Yeah. So it's such a beautiful family life you're describing now. Mm, uh, so and, uh, yeah, wait, how would you describe your relationship now? Now, it's um, oh, my dream relationship, actually. <laughs> it's my dream, you know, family, like what I wanted to um, be at peace. You know, I can share even my weakness, even my what happened to me on the day, like I felt 
when I felt lazy, you know, <laughs> when I don't want to do anything. I shared share it to him now in a nice way, not complaining. And he no. will say, just rest, you know, nobody is rushing you to do this thing. You know, I understand now how to talk to him. Like before, I, I thought I knew how to talk to him. I thought I know him, but I no, I got the wrong idea. <laughs> yeah. ah. Well, it's amazing. What? Uh, so congratulations, first of all, on fixing your Thank family, you. saving your family, your daughter. How, how has it impacted your daughter? Oh, she's so happy. Even my friends uh, said that she has this new glow that when her father is there, you know, she's like just happy and proud that we are all together. Yeah. You know, yeah, all her, uh, my friends telling her it's still different when your family is complete. It shows with your um, daughter and she excels in school. Oh, fantastic. she excels in school and uh, yeah, her father was really really proud of her because before you know the first time the first day when we are just just two two of us when in the morning when I set the table she's still setting for another um, plate this is for that I said oh. it's only you me you know yeah. you and me <laughs> and we I cried that uh, that day I love myself and said, it's only you and me now, you and me. No, <laughs> that was, and she was only like nearly three that yeah. time, three years old. So it's yeah. difficult. It was, we've been through heart. a lot. Mm, yeah, it breaks you could see my her heart. Heartbreaking that she yeah. was missing her dad. But, yeah. mm, but when her dad is there, I know that she's like, you know, completely happy. Yeah. And, I don't want to take that away from her, really. Never, never. <laughs> and I never. wanted to be there, you know, to see that both of them having those, uh, you know, bond. Yes, beautiful. Well, what is your tip, uh, Cariel? If you are talking to a woman and she is where you were, maybe she's separated and she's she's gotten with somebody else and her husband's gotten with somebody else and they have a child and it's, but it seems hopeless, but she wants what you have now uh, where it feels so like your dream relationship and your daughter is happy and smiling to have her dad back. What, where should she start? What tip would you give her? First, it's understandable that everything is, you know, it's chaotic in your mind. So I don't expect her to, um, you know, to don't, uh, not to have any hesitation with, um, with the decision making. Like, I want to stay with my husband. I want, you, you don't get it right away now, like me. Because even me, I don't feel like, you know, I started um, feeling, you know, the trust when, when it's lost. You felt like you don't easily trust anyone. So that's understandable. Go through it. I, you know, advise them, just go through it, go through the pain, leave it, you know, let, um, allow yourself to experience those um, painful, you know, painful things. You're human, you know, and um, nobody can take that away. Um, and it's okay for you not to be okay that moment. <laughs> But once you um, get yourself right back, you become a bit uh, relaxed. And uh, prayer helps me, really. Yeah, Prayer helps me, meditation, you know, what to do to um, when you feel like you're really anxious inside. You don't get things right. So you have to calm down and settle. You don't do big um, like decision. No, not in one day. Yeah. So my advice is give yourself, give your, um, first allow yourself to uh, go through that painful stage. Let it settle. Then work throughout what you want. What's your goal, you know, with yourself? Do you want to leave? Do you want to? But sometimes, um, even me, I felt I want to leave that yeah. time. Sure. But it changed me, you know, my perspective. So, you know, it's a journey. Yeah. It's really a journey. It's not like, oh, I want now and then. 
it will never change. I thought it's like that. Once you decide, no, no, it's not like that. I really hang on to my commitment to my marriage, yeah. even though it's really difficult. So yeah, that's why I always like ask um, God for um, help, you know, with decision making. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. And next is, I think, give your marriage a fighting chance. If you like fall apart for a year, Give it one year also to recover the same amount of time that you, you know, broken up. Give it a fighting chance, the same amount of time to recover. Because I think as, as a woman, we want it now, now, you know, oh, we wanted yeah. to fix things right away. But no, this will really test your patience. It tests your patience, how you are being humble, you know, it removes your pride, everything. It's perseverance. It really tests your character. I think that's what God wants me to to mold my character with these things. So that's what I learned, really, yeah. in, this, uh, in this journey, long, long journey. So it sounds like you became a better version of Cariel in this yeah. process on this journey yeah. and i thought i'm already better but no. <laughs> <laughs> right I right like i'm 100 percent. i'm good i'm sure it's not my fault you know yeah. it's like, that. like yeah. I'm sure you that you start you know all those things that you are right that yeah you no know, you don't know everything now yeah. i realize that you don't know everything yeah, yeah. and now and you're you so accountable mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I get that now. It's like a part of me now forming that new habit became, you know, it becomes me now, a part of me. And then what? Uh, one more thing that happened. Now I told this to my friend because my friend suffered also. He she separated with her husband also, and I know it sounds really bad, but when she came to me because she know what happened to me. She came to me. I advise her the same. You know, it's been a year. They're back. Wow. So yeah. she's also using also. the same principles and practices. Yes, yeah. she you. also and just just one year, and wow. it happened also when she when she was pregnant with um, their child. Your child. Wow, that yeah. must have been gratifying. You had some wisdom to share. Yes, yeah. Otherwise, I can't help other people also. If it didn't happen to me, what shall I say? You know, yeah. I don't know what, don't what know. the right yeah. words to say. I, yeah. I, I'm not the right person to talk to because I don't have any other, you know, like wisdom to share with uh, to her. And I cannot even give the right advice. But because it happened, it's a testimony and they saw it. They really saw it, you know, in my life. She came to me for, you know, for an advice. And You're a role model. That it, it proves that it's working because it happened to her as well. Me too. That's yeah. fantastic. Wow. Yeah. And I give her the book as well. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I said, do this one. Try this, yeah, you know, try this. it will change. Yeah. yeah, why not? You know, and then she did. She did what I asked because everybody was telling her, oh, you know, divorce your husband. This is England. It's, you know, it's different, blah, blah, blah. All those things, you know, that other people say. But I'm glad that she stick with, uh, you know, with what I tell her. With um, She said with my guidance, it helped her. And she said she trusted me with her family. So I was like, oh, thank you. But it's from also Laura. It's from God, you know. It's not only from me. So this helps, really. It's not only me. Maybe you'll be a coach someday, (laughs) Cariel. I don't know. Yeah, Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I don't know yet. But Yeah. yeah, that's what happened. What would you say to Carrie if you could go back in time and tell her what you know now? Oh, <laughs> I'll give her a pat of the, on the back. A pat on the back. <laughs> a pat on the back. You did your best on those times. You know, you you know, you cling on to what you hold on true to your belief. 
because if I just go with the flow and you know um follow what other says and don't seek wisdom you know the right people maybe I have another um family I will have you know I have another husband and then it's not everything right again you know and then I fall apart you know all those cycles will just repeat but yeah I give myself a pat and a bag a hug myself you did right even though it I cannot you know I cannot say you did all those things like uh, you ruin yourself, blah, blah, blah. No, I think it's part of, you know, all those struggles are part of me. I'm not hiding it because um, it helps others. Yes. That it means realistically it's happening in the world. Yes. That's struggle, silently struggle. And we don't know what to do. We don't have answer. And most of the people, most of the people that surround us, they don't have the answer. They're just talking. <laughs> you know, they're just talking with what they know, but they don't realize how impactful those conversations are. Yeah. That is so inspiring, Carrie. That is really beautiful. I love your compassion for yourself and your love for yourself, the sweetness, the empathy, and the gentleness, um, because and you were doing the best you could. You were doing the best you could, and now you're still doing the best you can, and it's a lot better, but, but you were doing the best you could back then too. And so that's all we can, that's all we can say to Carrie L from the past, like, from oh, past, sweetie, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you were doing the best you could, <laughs> and you were hurting, and, and you didn't know, and uh, and you sought wisdom and, um, and now you're here to inspire others and, uh, you're definitely inspiring me. I'm sure lots of listeners do. So thank you so much for sharing your beautiful story. Congratulations on your amazing accomplishment of saving your family. Oh, you're welcome, Laura. Thank you so much also for your book. And for the guidance to the women who I talk to with also. I think I saw one of uh, your coach. I forget her name. She lives in, she lives here somewhere. I saw her in Bath, you know. And um, yeah, and I was surprised. Oh, she's, you know, she's here. I saw her in the playground. I forget her name really. But um, yeah, it's, you know, it's inspiring what you do. Because now people don't believe in marriage. (laughs) I think this 21st century, the the commitments are going out. It's just for the sake of, you know, saying I do with a grand, um, you know, gestures or for, I don't know. Um, It's different now, but I wanted them to keep their commitments, their vows, that it's still true. Love is still, you know, around. True love is still around like like us you know we love our family and that's how we um you know um we share it to others by our testimony with what's happening in our life and how victorious we are after those struggles i think it will help with um other women too well you're definitely on the mission to end world divorce with me and uh, I second the motion. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm happy for that. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Carrie. You're welcome. If you'd like to be my guest on the Empowered Wife podcast and share about how you fixed a struggling relationship using the six intimacy skills, I would love to interview you. Just go to lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest to let me know that you are willing to make a big contribution to ending world divorce by telling your relationship story. I look forward to meeting you. That's lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest. And now it's time for the worst relationship advice of the week award. And the advice is making me hostile this week. 
is from an online article called 15 Things Your Partner Will Never Do If You're in a Healthy Relationship. And I want to give a shout out to the wonderful coach who sent this to me. And she wrote, oh my gosh, terrible relationship advice. And she is absolutely right that this is awful, twisted, discouraging advice. So thanks for the love and for your contribution to the podcast. I'm so grateful. Mwah. So everything this article lists are things that your partner will never do if your relationship is healthy. Obviously, if your partner does any of these things, then you're not in a healthy relationship, which means you're in an unhealthy relationship, which means you're in a sick relationship. When my relationship was struggling, I would have treated this kind of article like a diagnostic quiz that would tell me if my relationship was hopelessly broken. I would also have imagined that there are many relationships, probably most other relationships that don't have any of these 15 signs of being a sick relationship in them. And that's why what was happening in my marriage felt so shameful and so secret. The article goes on to say a bunch of things that are on this list that, that go on in my relationship. And, and from what I hear, they go on in many relationships. For example, one of the items is that your partner never minimizes or dismisses your feelings. Come on, never minimize or dismiss your feelings. Who is your partner? A golden retriever? And it says they're never controlling. Your partner is never controlling if you're in a healthy relationship. So right there, like if John was reading this article, he'd spit out his coffee and surprise. And then I guess I'd be kicked to the curb because sometimes to this day, I'm still controlling. But the part that really smoked my salmon was when it said, a good partner never says no to you when you want to go to couples therapy. I have seen the damage that this causes when partners say no and block their potential to develop. It goes on to say, this causes more conflict between partners and prevents happiness being created in their relationship. <laughs> okay, so that's when I noticed that the person who they quote throughout this article, and I hope you're sitting down when I tell you this, but she is a psychotherapist and a couples counselor. Well-meaning, I'm sure. But unfortunately, apparently she's never been in a relationship or she would know that the things on her unhealthy list happen in every relationship sometimes because there are two human beings involved and there are bad moods and misunderstandings and jokes that aren't funny until much later and hormones, and just two imperfect people. So that doesn't make it an unhealthy relationship. Expecting your partner to be perfect, though, well, that could certainly put undue pressure on the relationship. Wanting to have lots of laughs and cuddles and deep conversations, that's totally appropriate. But expecting that you'll never feel hurt, annoyed, or afraid because of something your partner is doing, well, that's looking for perfection. And when your partner is not perfect, and you want to take him to therapy so you can tell him so and have a stranger validate your point of view and your partner senses this is what's coming and refuses to go to counseling, that might not be so unhealthy either. If you're anything like I was and you just want to go to counseling so you can have someone else fix your husband and finally be happy, well, that's not going to help much. And for that reason, the advice that a good partner never says no to you when you want to go to couples therapy is the very, very worst relationship advice I have heard all week. Listen and subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. Next week, I'll share four solutions when your husband doesn't like you. In the meantime, I hope you're having lots of fun. Today's fun fact is that I found out I made the finals in the Miss Bikini Ireland and I didn't even enter. I'm so excited. Either that or there's more than one Laura Doyle. <laughs>